Good morning, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. It really means a lot. And before we get started, I just want to let you know I happen to be recording on Veterans Day, so I decided to wear red, white, and blue. And I just want to take a minute to say the war is real. There are spiritual battles and there are really evil, bad people out there. So thank you to all the armed services and all our public servants that protect us. Thank you for your service. So if this is your first time to join me, I just want to let you know what I'm doing. I am reading a book called Prayer, Peace, and the Presence of God by David Butts. It's a little 30-day devotional, but I'm just going to do one a week. So <laughs> I know we're all so super busy and I don't want to overwhelm anybody because this is about trying to find a little peace. So it's a Sabbath day and it's time to relax and just quiet our minds. We're going to talk about day two is going to be Peace I leave with you. That's because that's the words of Jesus. So we're going to talk about that. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I did not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That was John 14, 27. And now for the rest of Mr. Butt's story. One of the more admirable traits of humans is our desire for peace. It just hasn't turned out well for us. We all know that peace talks and treaties have failed. In an older study back in 1894, Russian sociologist Jacques Novikov documented that from the year 1500 BC to 1860 AD, that's 3,360 years, more than 8,000 treaties were adopted with intentions to assure permanent peace. The average time they remained in force was only two years. Peace between humans is much sought after, but seems to be elusive. Jesus distinguishes clearly the peace he offers with that which can be found in the world. In a very real sense, he renamed this, my peace. The peace of Christ must not be confused with what the world attempts as peace. What the world reaches for, admirably, but in vain, is simply the absence of hostilities. What Jesus offers his followers goes a lot deeper than that. What Jesus offers is his peace. It's a gift given by him to those who are following him. It is formed deep within us and transforms us from the inside out. Jesus was about to demonstrate what he meant by his peace when he was arrested in the middle of the night, abused and beaten and forced to stand before authorities in a mockery of a trial. He appears to be the only one at peace. Others are shouting and upset. Jesus, who had every reason for distress and anger, stands in peace before his accusers. Jesus has left his peace with us. It is clearly a gift, not just for a few select disciples, but for all who follow him. That is so encouraging. It is to be received, embraced, and deepened through regular practice. The peace of Christ clearly does not promise us an absence of hostilities. In fact, Jesus promised us times of trouble in John 16, 33. But because of his great gift of peace, he is able to say clearly to us, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. As it was for him personally, the peace of Christ shines brightest in times of adversity. It may be when your faith is on the line as it was for Jesus before the authorities. But there are many times of trouble that we face in this world. It could be the loss of a job, sickness you are facing, problems with a relationship, or the death of a loved one. When we turn our attention from our circumstances to the Lord over the circumstances, 
we will find the peace that is ultimately in him, given to us through his grace. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this amazing gift of your peace. You lived out this peace as you dwelt among us and left it here for us. Help me to fully embrace your peace and live it daily, especially in times of trouble. Teach me to look to you and your peace rather than the turbulence in which I find myself. May my heart not be troubled, nor my fears overtake me because of the wonderful gift of your overwhelming peace. Well, times can be overwhelming. As a matter of fact, just this morning before I was getting ready to read this to you, I found myself really anxious. It turns out that the people that care for my dad had decided that they were going to cancel, that they, they didn't want to do any part-time care, and they were not going to find anybody to help. So I was just really anxious. What was I going to do? I mean, my dad needs somebody during the day when I'm at work. And so I found myself getting angry and upset and frantically figuring out, like, what am I going to do? Who's going to watch him? And I just realized that, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm about to read my devotional about peace and I need to remember from last week that first put my petition to the Lord. Let him know, hey, Jesus, um, there's a problem here and I can't fix this by myself. So I first took a breath. Okay, Lord, you know I need help. You know my dad needs help. Send somebody to help. And then I just knew that he was going to take care of it. The point is, you know, every day we're going to have something that's going to cause stress. We just have to remember to look to the Lord. Thanks for joining me. And I hope to see you next week. Shalom.